Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to the last of uh, the Nanovic Institute's European Film Series presentations for this semester. I'm Anthony Monta, I'm the Associate Director of the Institute. Uh, we want to in particular thank Ricky Herbst, Ted Barron, and Stefan Kaup for once again setting a really impossibly high standard of collegiality and, and expertise in making the series possible. We also want to thank you, the, the few, the proud, on this snowy night, um, European film aficionados who come out and, and brave the elements. Let's get right to tonight's film. So the film is uh, entitled A Chambra. It is directed by Jonas Carpignano, 34 years old, young filmmaker from the Bronx. He was born in the Bronx to Italian and Caribbean parents, uh, lives in Italy. This is his second feature film. It's already won a bunch of awards, including a Donatello, the equivalent of the Italian Oscar for best director. A Chambra refers to the name of a specific neighborhood, or more precisely, a kind of ghetto, a Campo Nomadi, located in Gioia Tauro on the Calabrian coast. This is southern Italy across the strait from, uh, from Sicily. This is a depressed area, part of the poor south, the Mezzogiorno. And the Chambra is composed of solid tenements that look like bunkers. So it's uh, visually it inspires questions like, what kind of future do young people have here? What uh, opportunities do they have for upward mobility, or indeed any kind of mobility at all? Specifically, what kind of future can a young Roma boy expect to have? What do we mean by Roma? Okay, the Roma uh, are people, according to the best scholarship, who were likely forced out of northern India, Rajasthan, in uh, roughly the 11th century. They migrated across Europe, and being dark-skinned, they originally thought to be Egyptians, hence the name Gypsy. They continued to move through Europe as Compania, and they split. Okay? So these are family groups, loosely organized, with some of the clans specializing in various trades, like horse trading, coppersmith, music. Their word for themselves is Rom, which means um, free man. And they call us, for example, who are sedentary, gadje, which means sort of the opposite, sedentary, non-gypsy. And they mostly kept to themselves for centuries with strict purity laws and semi-flexible endogamy. Their language and music have always been a sponge. They absorb myriad influences from the cultures around them. Their religious practices are similarly very absorbent and syncretistic. And they can be found in nearly every European country, even in the U.S., okay, so across the world. The, the gypsy, so-called gypsy diaspora, is very large indeed. Being nomadic for centuries, Roma came into continuous conflict with sedentary groups, with their national borders, their laws, and their prejudices, most infamously the Nazi persecution and ext attempted extermination, which the Roma called the porajmos, the devouring. So think of the, but over time they settled, uh, or were forced to settle. Think of the northwestern banlieue of Paris, for example. Um, a situation that was beneficial in some areas for sanitation, health, schooling, but profoundly at odds with older nomadic traditions and norms that they carried with them. So even though the Roma have been in Europe since the 13th century, and in some ways, I guess we can consider them the truest new Europeans, those Europeans who move freely across borders and absorb all of these different influences. They still suffer greatly, not only by being divided from the other populations, but by being divided even among themselves. Which brings us to tonight's film. I don't want to give anything away, but let me offer four quick considerations. One, this film focuses on a young boy named Pio, uh, and it's the story of a kind of personal growth in him. In this case, something like growth towards responsible maturity. And I use those words advisedly. It's something that is responsible and mature. Amid all kinds of formative presser, pressures and rites of passage. Two, these, in, these uh, pressures come in the form of authorities, various kinds of authorities, such as older brothers, mothers, other family members, the local mafia, police, and we could ask if the film explores all these levels sufficiently as formative influences. 
Now, building romance, or these kinds of stories of personal growth, are, are stories of individuals, is here. So we could also ask, to what extent is this film a story about the Roma? If you know the films by this extraordinary filmmaker, Roma filmmaker named Tony Gottlieb, you'll see some important differences. And you might stay for the credits of this film and watch the names of those who are involved. Um, they're non-professional actors, uh, but they're very, they have very interesting last names. So please be on the watch for that. Last, if Carpignano is universalizing this central character's story, what's the level of universalization? Is Pio every Roma boy? Is he every Italian boy? Every migrant? Every man? How wide should our interpretive circle be for him, based on what Carpignano is doing here? Personally, I think Carpignano is inviting us to reflect on the nature of brotherhood, but not only in this nuclear familial sense. He appears to be interested in what the French call fraternité, okay, an ideal. And it appears to ask, with some anguish and pain, what it means to be sons and brothers today in contemporary Italy, in a prison of exploitation and betrayal, that if it's a little less than literal as a prison, it's certainly more than metaphorical. So, enjoy the film. <laughs>